Afternoon. 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 We need something to write with. Hopefully you got a note sheet. All right. So today what we are going to be getting into are electron configurations. It's a big day to be here. So good choice. Way to be here. So uh, a couple of reminders. One, uh, your FM AM extra credit report is due today by 3 o'clock. It should be typed. It can be double spaced, roughly three fourths of a page in length, or a page. Attach the article. If you had Mr. Blackford on Monday. And I didn't announce it, which I didn't, then you can turn it into me, my basket, not to me, by the end of the day tomorrow. Yeah. You want extra day. So it's, again, it's real simple. You just find an article about AMFM. You had an opportunity. If you don't do it, you don't do it. If you do, you do. So it's great. Uh, other thing is rating energy that is due tomorrow. So if you have questions and things, you still have tomorrow to talk about that. All right. Well, just going to get going. All right, so we're going to get going. I'm going to give you a little bit of background information, then we'll get into it. So the background information will help us, but I'll tell you now, the background information uh, is just that. It's going to give you just a little extra uh, info to, to give a little bit more understanding, okay? So there's nothing to write on yet. Uh, this is the model that we left off at, and it's Bohr's model. Uh, you have electrons flowing literally on these exact tracks, these, uh, um, these energy levels. And what we are now going to say, and hopefully this at least you can relate to it in some way, it's way too specific. It's like a train on tracks. It's like it's only right there going really fast, and it's all just on this one little track. It's not realistic. Okay, so we're going to evolve our picture of the uh, atom. And what we're going to say is basically instead of saying that they're in one specific spot, they're all over the place. So underneath, uh, on the top, on quantum theory, please just write what I have right here which is what we're going to do is take a step back and we're going to basically admit that we don't quite know where everything is. Okay, the picture is great, but all you're doing is draw, uh, writing what quantum theory is. It's location of electrons. It's based on probability. Okay? We have a good idea where they are, but we're not totally sure. And you don't need to write anything yet, but above is this is called an electron cloud. This is not millions of electrons. It's all the places where electrons have been found. Okay, it's, it's all the places where they could be. It's like a density plot. Okay, so let's break that down just a little bit. There's a guy named Heisenberg. Not that Heisenberg, this Heisenberg. Uh, by the way, whoever drew it, somebody drew a really cool Heisenberg picture for me and put it in my slot. I thought it was absolutely awesome. Um, so whoever did that, thank you. Uh, but please write this down. Uh, and it says Heisenberg uncertainty principle kind of in the middle of the sheet. <laughs> it's a lot more complicated than this. But basically what he came up with, and if you ever watch Big Bang Theory, this comes up he, periodically. Uh, we could find a Sheldon clip right now of him talking about Heisenberg. Uh, these electrons are moving so fast and they're so small and they're everywhere, that this is what this is going to be based off of, is that we can't know where, how fast and where they are at the same time. If I figure out how fast they're going, they're always moving. You're always trying to track where they, how fast they're moving. They're never in one spot, so I don't know where they always are. If I try to isolate it and figure out where they are, I probably can't figure out how fast they, they're going because I'm trying to figure out where they actually are located at that time. So it's just like... It's this conundrum, it's this um, ambiguous uh, nature of, of being able to know only so much, okay? And, and we're limited. So I have an experiment. I did this the other day, and I, I took a satellite picture of the school. And there's nothing on your sheet for this. Every 10 minutes, put a little dot where I was sitting, or where I was standing, wherever I was, and I just put a dot down. So I had a low energy day. I had a schedule I didn't have to move around. And I was in my room a lot. And I was moving around. And not going a lot. Oh, talking to Mr. Anderson maybe. Oh, I had to get something to eat. And basically a simple pattern was created. Nothing much, OK? Low energy. Like, not much, right? It's, it's very condensed and, and not really all that exciting. 
you have two pictures below quantum theory. This one's just called an S orbital. There's a line on the bottom that's pointing to both. You can write this now because it's the same for both. Where these dots show basically 90% of where all the electrons are on either of those pictures. So you have this like, can I just borrow this? You have this picture with two, like a circle and then one with two little uh, areas and then the line comes up and down. You can write it right on that flat horizontal line, just wherever the, for both those arrows. It's the probability is about 90%. So you can just write right on that line. Okay, low energy, not a lot going on. So I tried it again. If you don't have that written down, this will be written in a second again. Higher energy day. I'm moving. I'm moving everywhere. I'm going. I went out to my car. I'm still moving out on the tennis court. Um, I'm going everywhere. And what is basically happening is the pattern is becoming more complicated because there's more energy. Okay. And this is more of a extravagant, a bigger pattern because there's more energy. And what I'm trying to relate this to is electrons are going to gain more energy. So this is called a p orbital and the same idea. That's all it is. It's the same picture. So if you do it once, it's the same idea. 90% of the time, electrons are located in those areas. Maybe it goes out to the car or on the tennis court, but most of the time it's right there. And it's just an electron cloud. Okay? Well, what's the whole point of this? Don't have to write any of this. These are kind of uh, pictures that signify the locations, the electron clouds of where my electrons are located. So simple uh, shape. This is the computer generated one. This is what's actually happening. Low energy. Bigger. So still simple, but a little bit larger energy because it's a little bit bigger. Like if you're at home and you're sick and you're not moving around a lot, you probably stay right by the sofa or right by your bed. If you have a little more energy, you might move out a little bit further. Okay. These different kinds of shapes gets a little more uh, extravagant. So we'll talk about this three thing. Why are there three? So here we go. Oops. We'll let them flop down. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. I have a little something to show you. So on the top, you have like a pyramid of different shapes. Your job is to know the letters and the numbers. And I will say, starting right now, some of this stuff that I'm going to say, you could approach this two different ways. There's a closed and an open mindset, or a fixed mindset and an open mindset. A fixed mindset would be like, oh, I can't do it. I'm done. And you just, you just shut it down. Even though if you just have a little faith in yourself and trust the fact that we're going to get you there, you're, we're going we're gonna to be fine. Or you could have... Uh, an open mindset be like, okay, I, I, I don't understand that right now, but hopefully it all kind of connects it when I'm all going and I'm going to take in as much as I can. This stuff right now, in the beginning, seems really confusing. Either we spend the next week and a half trying to explain things that we will not apply eventually to try to get you to understand some of the little parts, or just sit tight and just in 15 minutes, we will be really great, okay? Just, but you got to sit tight. And some people, I've, we've watched, some people have just come out like, I got it. And other people are like, oh, that was horrible. Well, I watched them the whole time, and all they did was like, pff, 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 and they just, they just pushed everything off. So focus in and, and take in as much as you can, and we'll be there at the end of class today, I, I promise, okay? So these are different orbitals, which are clouds, okay? And what I have is I have them in three dimensions. So this first one is just a sphere. So the top picture, it says blank orbital. It's an S. So just write S, and then it says orbital. I have the soccer ball. And basically, if you can just imagine this for a second, no matter how I spin this, if I'm not doing a great job on it, but it really takes up the same amount of space, right? I can't really, it, it's, it's taking up the same amount of, of volume, right? No matter what. That's why there's only one. Like, no matter how I spin this, if I actually had this on a stick and I spun it, it wouldn't take up new areas in space. So the electrons, if they take this shape, that's the only area that we have to worry about. So it's basically probability. I know obviously it goes up a little higher, but no matter what, it takes up the same amount of space. So there's just one. That's why you have one picture. Okay. P's are a little different. The next one's a P orbital. And you will have to know these letters, and it's not like you have to know them right away. So I have them right here. A P orbital is like a dumbbell. It's, this is just one, though. It looks like there's a top and a bottom. I get it. But there's just one. So this is the, the, the pattern that I had on the, the second part of the school. It can go up and it can go down. But why are there three? Because if I spin this, it's taking up different space. Like here, there's nothing here. Now there's something there. Oh, there's nothing here. Now there's something there. So there's an X. 
a y it's a dog no um and a z oh shoot <laughs> i can do it There we go. So you have an X, a Y, and a Z, and it takes up all that space. So I need to account for all of it. And that's why it fills it all up. So you need to understand that there are three because there's an X, a Y, and a Z. But you just, but now we, we're gonna come up with, there's three. As we gain energy, we get crazy. And I'm not expecting you to understand all these shapes, but these are called Ds, and there's five, and there's some crazy ones. Just get more energy. And then the last one, there's Fs, and there's seven. So they get crazier and crazier. And all I need to, you to take from this so far is that as electrons get more energy, they, they start to do more and crazy patterns and shapes. And because of that, there's more different ways that we have to take that into account of where they could be. So that's why there's more numbers. So one, three, five, seven. You may want to even just jot down on the side, even though you can probably see based on your picture. Okay, so we are ready to start. Okay. This you are not writing down at all today, right here. So last hour, had some issues with this. But off-ball principle, there's a little spot. I just want you to quickly write this down on the side. You are teenagers. It is a scientific fact that you guys are more tired. You have a sense of feeling like you're lazy sometimes because of all that energy is going to growth in your brain and in your body and all that. It's just, it's happening. It's tough. Electrons, I think, are teenagers because electrons will always do the lowest energy configuration. It'll always fall in the lowest energy. And I'm not standing here going, you're lazy. I'm just saying, you have energy going all over the place that's not going to what you always want it to be going at. Just that simple. So what I want to do, what we want to do, is help you by, for the first time ever, the only time this year, we're going to cheat. Okay, so we are not going to memorize this. I had to do this when I was in high school. Like it, it, it will always go to the lowest and you don't know all these numbers yet, but an electron will always fall here first at a one and then it'll go up to these twos and we learn that an S is simpler than, an S is simpler than a P. So it would go into an S first, then it would go into the P. And so on and so forth, but check it out. All of a sudden it's like, wait a minute, there's a three, then it goes to four, then it goes back to three, uh-oh. I know this is going to be a disaster for my life. I'm going to have to memorize all this stuff. We're going to make a cheat pyramid. So what I need you to do, in the box, oh, shoot, just a sec. Okay. It's, oh, just, hold on. <coughs> it's overloading itself. Here we go. In the box where it says cheat pyramid, only the black lettering here. Line it up exactly the, do you have a, a note sheet? Oh, this whole time? Anybody else not have a note sheet? after 17 minutes 17 minutes of lecture and me asking about note sheets multiple times here you go Quinn <laughs> line it up this is what I would do on the left side right 1s 2s 3s all the way to 7s then do 2p through 7p 3d 6d 4f 5f line it up with the columns and the rows exactly the way I have it this will be your lifeline this will be the device that we can use so we don't have to memorize a really difficult order for energy. When you are done with that, you will draw arrows like I have up front. One thing I want you to notice as you're doing it, like why is it called a pyramid? If you turn your head sideways, it's a pyramid. Every energy level gains what we're gonna call a sublevel. So the first level only has one S, the second one has two of them, the third one has three of them, the fourth one has four of them. It's not a coincidence. Every energy level has one more sublevel. And then draw the arrows. It needs to line up exactly the way I have it, or it will not work.
Okay, once we have that, we're going to get into it. We're going to do three examples. Stay with me. Don't cheat yourself on this. Stay with me. By the time the third one's through, you'll get it. After the first one, if you're like, I don't get why it's this and that and the other, it's okay. It takes about three of them to do it. By the time we're done with the third, if, if you've been trying and, and working with it, most people come out of here feeling like they feel like they have some sort of grasp on parts of this at least, if not feeling decent. If you don't have it all written down, it's about to show up again. Okay, so here we go. We're going to do three of them. We're going to start with boron, okay? If I asked you the number of electrons, that's what this is all about. If you're like, what are we doing? We're trying to show where the electrons live, literally where they're located. It's important. Because electrons uh, are located in a certain way on sodium, it blows up in water. And the reason why electrons are uh, organized the way they are in helium, we've never heard of an explosion from the balloons at a kid's party. It's all about the electrons. Okay? So, if I asked you how many electrons boron has, looking at the periodic table, this has no charge. So how many electrons would this have if it has zero charge? It would have five because there's five protons. It would equal the protons because they would be even. So please write that down. I have a spot for that on boron. Now, if I'd say I feel like I made one small mistake, I didn't make you have enough uh, space on this, so I'd suggest writing kind of small because I, I wanted you to label some things on boron. So here we go. Please bring as much attention and focus as you can for the next 10 minutes here. This chart shows me the order. What I'd like you to do before we start, under each column, please put a little parenthesis. How many S's did we have? It's on the top. How many? Like literal, like how many different S's can you have? One. one. Put a parenthesis and write one. How many P's? Three. There were three, right? There were three different lobes. How many D's? It's right on top of your sheet. So do five and then do seven. So you should have one, three, five, seven. Write that before we go. To me, actually, that's the hardest part. Okay? So this tells me the order. I start at the top. You can stay with me here. I go down, I have to start at 1s. And s requires one line. Try to leave just a little space, uh, but we're going to do it on the bottom part of, of that area. But don't do it below the b. Do it a little bit of the side. Um, so like under orbital or something. s gets one line. OK, I need five electrons. I'm just going to show you how this works. Electrons are going to be arrows. OK? Now, this is the best way I can say it, and I hope you, that you can all see this. In a book, they would draw an electron as an up arrow. It takes too long. You literally just take the flag, go up, and then pull it down. So just go a little bit up, pull it down. That's going to be my electron. That's one. I need five. Electrons will pair up. So without writing this down, I'm telling you right now, these lines, you can fit two electrons on one line. So then I do a down. Literally just take your pen, go down, and then flick it up. So that is two electrons. I need to get to five. This is full. And we'll, we'll, you'll see. So after 1s, where do I go? I go to 2s. OK. I have to go up to another energy level. So I, s's have one line. So I'm at two electrons. So now I need to do three. Four. I do not expect you to have this down after the first one, like at all. I'm seeing a lot of faces like, what? Just, just write it down for the first time. Just got to trust me on it. How many more electrons? I need one more. OK, that's full. What do I draw next, even if we don't know how? I go to the 2p. It's important that you're understanding the, the, this first time is about the, the cheat pyramid, really. I go to 2p. How many lines are in a p, do you think? Three. We're going to write it to the side because it's a 2 still, so this is the same energy level. If you're like, oh, I'm not going to draw that bracket. If we don't do the bracket, we literally have to write 2p, 2p, 2p underneath each of them. So you just do a 2p and you just do the bracket. I need one more, and there it is. This is called an orbital diagram. The other thing you're going to like a lot more, 
you're going to love electron configurations. You'll be like, oh, I can do that. Let's label a few things. I'm sorry if you don't have space. We can label it then on the next one. This is, this is my flaw of your note sheet. It's important to understand what these all are. Oh, by the way, so you don't have to write this. But as we go, this time it's going up because every time I gain a level, I'm gaining energy. The numbers are energy levels. I think this is important to have a key. The letters are called sub-levels. So you can have multiple sub-levels, like energy level four has four sub-levels, an S, a P, a D, and an F. The line itself is called an orbital. So like S's have one orbital, P's have three orbitals, like three different ways that it can be sitting in space. Honestly, I don't think you need to label the next one. We all know that's an electron, and you will as you do this. But the last two are important. Without getting scientifically involved in this, basically it's like a, almost literally a positive and a negative pole, but we just call it up or down spin. Electrons have to have opposite spins. So literally one spinning clockwise, let's say the other one spinning counterclockwise. I feel like I'm doing the tapping on my head and the, the stomach when I'm, yeah. So that's it, okay. What is an electron configuration? You're gonna like this. This is the harder way. Sometimes, eventually we won't have to do this all the time. This is more like the address, so check it out. I have one S and there's two of them. I literally write one S, two. One S and there's two. So the next one would be 2s2. So how do I finish it already? We may even finish one of these, I bet you know the next one. I'd write 2p1. Hey, notice so I'm not saying 1s squared. It's 1s2, OK? It's not a math problem. It's, it's how many there are. So this is the first one. We've got two more. And you can see the similarities and the differences, OK? So that is boron. I know you're going to have a lot of questions. They, they won't help a lot until we start seeing some other things. So let's go to the next one. Phosphorus. How many electrons am I talking about? It's right there. 15. 15 electrons because they're equal right now. There's no charge. So write 15. So now, I want you to understand this. The last one that we did, I started on the bottom. What if, like, how high am I supposed to go? Like, on my piece of paper, how low am I supposed to go to know if I don't run out. So I can do this instead. What if I start from the top and I just go down, like my cheat pyramid, actually. It says 1s, then 2s. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to start from the top. I'm not trying to go too fast. I'm going to show you right now. Check this out. This is where we left off. It is the same problem every time at certain numbers. That's 5. But yeah, we're going to 15. Correct. But that's five. Okay, it's still five right now. So I want it. So right, start in the top, make a one s, two arrows, go right below it, put a two s, two, um, and then you can make your two p. Like, well, wait, why are we going downward? Because I don't know how much room I need. This is the like kind of the smarter approach, so I don't run out of space. Okay, I need fifteen. I'm at five. Okay, so I keep going. So six, seven. And I will talk about this later, but notice I'm going up, up, up. It's important. I'm going to come back. Eight, nine, ten. Notice every line gets two electrons. Every, elect uh, every pair has to be an up and a down. So I'm at ten. Okay. What comes next? I filled that up. I'm right here. Three so S. Where do you think I write that? Below the 2s. Check it out. The cheat pyramid is the exact same setup. 1s, 2s below it, 2p to the side. So now I'm writing 3s down here. So it's one line. I'm at 10, 11, 12. What's next? I'm at the bottom of this arrow. I come up to the top, 3p. So p's have 3. I write it to the right. And it's up. Up, up. Not up, down, up. If you have any room to fit that on the side, this is the last rule that I'm giving you today. This is called Hun's rule. 
You guys, when you were young, you probably loved sitting next to your friends on the bus. Like, ah, come and sit with me, yeah! And you're like, yeah, let's see how many people. But now you get done with a football game or a band competition or whatever, and you're all like, get out of my seat. Like, I'm sitting here, taken. You all fill up all the seats separately. It's the same idea with electrons. If they can, they will fill each electron uh, or orbital separately first. The best way I can explain that is if th this is actually three, not six, if they're all in only like two spots, it's very, very uneven. It'd be like really heavy on one side and it would, it would all shift to the bottom. It, it wants to evenly distribute itself. So it will try to maximize um, every orbital and fill every one of them up first. It's more balanced. It's a good way to think about it. All those electrons are the same charges. So opposite charges are going to get as far away from one another as they can and still be in that same energy level. Yep. So it is wrong to do it like this. This is correct. And that's a great point. It, it, they are negative. So, and here it's like, well, they pair up here. There's nowhere else for it to go. So they will then go there because it's more energy to get to here. They'll go here first. All right. Yep. No, go. Chime in, but that's why they pair up with opposite spins. Because this is more of a physics concept, but spinning charges produce magnetic fields. And so when they pair up with opposite spins, they're essentially two oppositely poles magnets. You know how to do the electron configuration. But I'll get you started. We can finish it. Oh, no, I have a, wake, a waker buzzer. So after two, so it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, what else? 3s2, 3p3. What do all these superscript numbers add up to? 15. One more. What is iron? How many? 26. Guys, we will talk later about charges. If I say this is a plus three charge, well then I have three more, we'll get into it later, but it changes the number of electrons. But right now you don't see a charge, it's the same. We'll, we'll just stay on that for now. So it's 26. What did we just do? We just did 15, right? It's going to be the same. And I, I, I'm gonna let you write it in, but I'm trying to prove a point here. Like, that's 15. It doesn't change ever. So as you get comfortable, it's not like, oh my gosh, now I gotta do 26. I don't know where I'm starting. It's still the same approach. It's just we're adding more or we're adding less. So I'm gonna give you a second. Map that all out, please, so far. But this one, it proves kind of a final point that we really need to talk about. And after this one, I think you'll already start feeling pretty good about it, I hope, and if not, that's where you need to come in. Okay, it doesn't just happen. You gotta work at it, and then you need to, need to sometimes come and get some help. Notice I went up, 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 right? Notice we line them up. It's not your ability to go wherever. Oh, <laughs> slow down, slow down, not, not right. So, 15, 16, 17, 18. I'm sorry if you're not there yet. I know I went really fast through, but this is where, so if you're writing on stuff, just please visually see this. What comes next? I'm following my arrows. 4S. Whoa, what? It must mean, and you don't need to understand it further than this. The arrows tell me which one is the next lowest energy. This is, can you just hold that? That is disaster averted. This is simpler than this. So even though this is a quote unquote higher energy level, it must take less energy to get into here than to start get, uh, actually this isn't even, I'm not even doing this right, this is only a P, a D is even more confusing. It's not our job to even worry about it. The flow chart, the cheat pyramid, tells us the order. So I go to 4S next, where do I write the 4S? Yeah. Under the 3S, just like the cheat pyramid. So I'm at 18, 19, 20, then what? Then you go to 3D. 3D. So let's talk about that. First, how many lines does a D have? 
5. Where am I going to draw it? Right here, just like the cheat pyramid. So I make five lines. Yep. And then what am I at? I'm at 20, right? So I need six more. How am I going to fill in the last six? Up, 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 up. And then come back, right? So up, 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 up. That's 25. Boom. 26. 